today on Seattle Refined, a special get together. And I remember one time, I've never told you guys this. <laughs> Three old friends and Como TV legends RSVP for one unforgettable night of fond memories. She was uh, such a special friend, and God, I counted on her for so much. Big laughs. <laughs> the safest place to be in case of an earthquake, <laughs> under the northwest corner of Dan Lewis's hair. They could, they could put a dirt clod out there on the 4 o'clock show. Steve will taste it and go, oh, my God, that's the best thing I've ever tasted. And mutual admiration. That's about the nicest thing you can say to me. Your table is ready. Seattle Refined starts now. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. If you've ever watched our show before, you know we love something called Party of Three. We invite three guests to a Seattle spot for good food and conversation. I'm at the Space Needle because our next party of three takes place right at the very top here at the popular Sky City restaurant. And if you've ever watched Como over the years, you probably will recognize our guests. Dan Lewis, Steve Poole, and Eric Johnson are friends first, colleagues second. For more than 20 years, they sat side by side delivering the news, weather, and sports on Como 4. Dan Lewis was Como's main anchor for 27 years before retiring in 2014. To this day, Dan and his co-anchor, Kathy Gertzen, are one of the longest running anchor teams in the country. He's simply a legend. Eric Johnson <laughs> took over for Dan on the anchor desk, but has tugged at our heartstrings for decades with his inspiring storytelling. He's won multiple Emmys, He's even won a national Edward R. Murrow Award for best feature story in the country. But no one has been at Como longer than weather expert Steve Poole. Steve Poole, Como 4 News. You've welcomed him into your homes for more than 40 years. He has more than a dozen Emmys and 80 guest appearances on Good Morning America. There's a lot of history between these three, and as you can imagine, they had a lot to catch up on, starting with Dan's new life. I still watch every day. You do oh, not. Do you really? I, yeah, and you know what? People didn't believe me. People, did, people didn't believe me when I worked there. When I said I watch over the weekend, they were like, "What? What do you?" you I, you got to know what's going on in your community. You yeah. know, I mean, to me, it's important. To me, it's important. What's that thing? What's it called when the mountain has the hat on it? That's called a lenticular cloud. It means it's going to rain, which yes. it's going to rain tomorrow. Yes, right? it's one of the indicators. I see, I've been watching. <laughs> see, there you go. <laughs> That's yeah. a pretty prominent one or whatever, right? Yeah. Dan's got a lenticular hairdo at all times. Yeah, right. <laughs> you still got the hair, man. You do. Well, I have, more, I have more hair now than I had when I was on TV. So, <laughs> so when did the beard go? Uh, I shaved the full beard off about four weeks ago and then I immediately started growing another one. But I shaved that off about a week ago. So how much of that was, after all those years, you can't, you know, can't grow a beard, can't grow your hair long, how much of it was, I'm retired, I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want? Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's it. Uh, there was no, there's no reason not to. Um, it, you know, it, it stunned me because I let my hair, my hair's been longer than this yes. at times yes. since I retired. And I have a lot of people say things like, uh, should we take up a, a collection so you can get a haircut? And I'm like, you know, the last thing you need to worry about is my hair. <laughs> you know, really. That's funny. You gotta admit it, oh. it's iconic. Yeah, yeah, really this is, is. true. Uh, the old, uh, I think it was uh, Kent and Allen was the uh, safest place to be in case of an earthquake <laughs> under the northwest corner of Dan Lewis's hair. If I retired and drew mine out, I'd have an afro. I would, my, I, I, oh, we'll have, a con we'll have a contest. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I beat you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've seen your afro <laughs> you see from that? back in the day. <laughs> UCLA Bruins won the Pac-10 track and field title today at Husky Stadium. Uh, I look like that guy. Remember that mod squad? Yeah, yeah Link. Link. That was me. Link. <laughs> I had one. I, my biggest was about that big, maybe. You know, really? it was seriously. Oh yeah. It was wow. not as tight as it should be. It was kind of loose and Art Garfunkel-esque, <laughs> <laughs> which. Nobody, nobody sets out to have Art Garfunkel yeah, hair. Let's just tell you what's going to happen here. Good evening, here's the newest information. I was asking Steve yesterday, 
we were doing it with Connie, Steve, and me. What our combined years in the business? In the in the business. Your combined in the business would be well above a hundred. And you're now in your forty-first year. Forty-first year. So I'm in my thirty-first. Yeah. So you're over a hundred years. A hundred over a hundred years in the business. God. Throw me in there, and we're hundred and fifty. <laughs> <laughs> And in 150 combined years, how much wisdom was accrued? That's the question. Uh, That's wisdom right. or knowledge? Very little. A lot <laughs> yeah. of knowledge, very There's little wisdom. <laughs> How's that crab cake? It's actually really good. It looks good. It's really, I couldn't wait anymore. I'm, it's like the four o'clock show. Yeah. yeah. It's like the four o'clock show. This I and can that's manage. our chocolate shake oh. right there. That is the nectar of the gods. <laughs> they could put a dirt clod out there on the four o'clock show. Steve will taste it and go, oh my God, that's the best thing I've ever tasted. Best thing I've ever had. <laughs> hey, there's sometimes that stuff comes in there and it's like, I try to be polite, you know, and, and give them kind of like, oh yeah, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> Well, if I hear the word interesting, I know that Steve's ready to Ralph. That's it. We can admit that as soon as the food segment began, Eric and I would sit there and kind of look at each other and go, all right, five, four, three, two, and here comes Steve. So this is tastes great, and it's good for you at the same time. So we have... Uh... Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, as soon as he said the salmon has some crab on top, I was like, yep, that's my meal. I think audiences are very perceptive, even if it's only on an emotional level. And they know when something is an affectation, it's not yeah. really real. I think it's more than just information. I think I want to hear my Uncle Ben tell a story. My Uncle Ben was a great storyteller. If someone just gave me that information of what was in his story, okay, interesting. Him telling me that story, I was sucked in as a kid every time. I think that one of the things that sets Como TV apart when you talk about storytelling is your storytelling. I'm very thankful and very, I feel very blessed to be able to do this at this age. 91. 91. I've, I've told you this before a million times. I have never known a person who can spin a story and tell a story as well as you do. What absolutely amazes me is the phrasing you come up with, the thoughts you come up with, and, you know, I've sat around with you many times where you have, you know, you're a prankster, you come off as sometimes as a little hard-edged, but you, in your stories, have the biggest heart yeah. of anybody. I mean, it's like, you, I can tell you truly care about the people and the story. Cece? Yes? You're my hero. Well, and you mine too for the news. Well, thank you. I, I would say this. I, I, would, I would say to someone, if you really want to know what's inside, watch my story. Oh, get a load of this. Dinner is just getting started. This is going to sound weird, but I'm envious of it. Yes. Dan reflects on life after TV news. I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the world. But first, remembering Como anchor Kathy Gertson. We all loved her so much. Oh, we yeah. so did. Seattle Refine will be right back. Welcome back to a very special Seattle Refined. I'm Gard Swanson. Have you ever been to a restaurant and the conversation at the table next to you was so good, you wished you were a part of it? That's the sort of magic that happened when we invited Dan Lewis, Steve Poole, and Eric Johnson out for a regular segment we do called Party of Three. The old friends worked side by side together on the Como Anchor Desk for more than two decades. And while one member of the legendary news team was missing, she was definitely there in spirit. You know, you guys, I think if, if, at the end of my career, 
and uh, you've had the end of your career and ours will be at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. When I look back, I'm going to think that the our finest hour was Kathy's night. That when we had that show, the show we did, the night Kathy died, yep. when they, they put us on a set mm -hmm. and turned on the cameras and said, go. For us, you know, we kind of had to come out and tell Kathy's story and we're so happy and proud to do it, but it's, yep. it's been difficult. It's really hard. But you know why it was our finest night? is because we just had an opportunity to honor and talk about this person that we loved. Yeah, from the heart. To me, this is kind of a, I don't know the right word I was going to say, it was a treat to be able, a privilege to be able to do that yeah. and yeah. share it with the community. Yeah. It was an honor. Uh, it was yeah. a total honor. We all loved her so much. Oh, yeah. We so did. You know, I, I still have on my phone pictures of us together at, at events we did. I have, te there. I have text messages. I've yeah, saved text I've kept messages all of from that. the last month you know, or so. I think about her every single day. And you know, we have just recently passed her birthday. Yes. And uh, it was her 59th birthday. And I thought you, I know I would have too, given her some grief about closing in on the big six. <laughs> oh, you know, and she would have hated it. Oh, God, yeah. uh, she would have had a fit. You know yeah. what I remember, you guys? When I joined this team, you guys were all established. You and Bruce and Kathy were an established team, and I came aboard, and I felt like I was joining the New York Yankees in 1955, <laughs> you know? I mean, I was just like, oh my God, these guys are awesome. And Kathy was there in that corner yeah. seat on the set there, or in the, next to the sports guy, and I just remember, I was, she scared the hell out of me, I'll tell you that right now. I was so nervous because she, yeah, Kathy Gertzen yeah. sitting next to me, yeah. you know? And I remember one time, I've never told you guys this. What? She goes, she goes, oh, is it hot in here? You're sweating. And I'm like, no, you make me nervous. <laughs> That's awesome. But I'm sure you found very quickly oh, that she was like oh, the yeah. easiest person to work so with. So real, yeah. so natural. I would just watch her. her I learned so much from her like that. I mean, just her facial expressions were just so real and natural she while this, I'm, you know, like trying to be the newsman. She did this thing, and I know you'll know what I'm talking about. I won't be able to do it the way she did it, but she had this kind of a, like a little, I know what you're thinking and you know what I'm thinking because I just went like that. She had this thing, she would tilt her head yeah. and then and it was just, it was like natural and yeah. real and everyone just... Yeah, that's just, a, she was just real all the time. But that night, that night, we just sat there and they turned on the cameras and said go. I will I, never I forget think, that as long as I, I live. I think for what we did that night, I think of it as one of the most amazing things that as a group we've ever done. But you know what we would have done that night if we were not in the TV business and Kathy was our friend? We would have sat around the table and told all those same stories. Yes. And that's why I think it was just such a great night because it was just us talking about this woman we loved that we were not ever going to see again. She was uh, such a special friend, and God, I counted on her for so much. She would always, she'd have to put me in my place every once in a while. You, you, know? you. Oh, yeah. How about me? How about all of us? You, you more than me, that's for sure. Yeah, you more than me too. She goes, what's that? She goes, I just, I just tried to get a rise out of her, and I remember one time she goes, I said something, just popping off, you know. She goes. Yeah, you need to shut the blank up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I go like a, that's yeah. so yeah. fair enough. This, fair this enough. Is, uh, she did not suffer fools gladly. No, no, no. You know, she, oh, she was funny. Just her presence. She was something else. Next on Seattle Refined, life after TV news. I was kind of surprised how easy it was for me to let it go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Photography. Oh, yeah. Plus, a few moments we say from the cutting room floor. Go yes. to hell, Dan. Yeah, geez. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Refined, I'm Gard Swanson. If I had to pick two words to describe former Como anchor Dan Lewis, they'd be integrity and class. For nearly three decades, viewers counted on Dan's calm and reassuring presence to guide them through some of the biggest news stories of the day. So when we invited him out to eat, we couldn't wait to hear what life is like for him these days. <laughs> Hello to this. What? What the? Get a picture, get a picture. Steve, it's a little cloudy in here. What is the what's, name what's of this? The, the Lear Orbiter from oh. our original 1962 oh, menu. Oh, really? Is it really? Oh, wow. Did it do this in 62? Yeah. Wow. Well, as we end this gathering, I can't tell you guys how much I miss being with you, how much I miss the camaraderie in the newsroom, and how much I'm enjoying my retired life. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Here we are after 27 years. This is the last show anchored by our Dan Lewis on the last day before his retirement. I hope you have a wonderful night, and I hope that I see you again. And if you see me out there somewhere, please say hi, because I do consider you to be a, a very dear friend of mine. Thank you very much. I know you'll check in on us often, and I speak for everybody here when I say thank you. You're, you're thank right. You. This is going to sound weird, but I'm envious of you. Yes. Not so much because, okay, I've had it, but I, and I mean, we've seen each other a fair amount since you've retired. And the sense of, of purpose and calm and very sure of what you want to do and what's your life to be like. And I see so many people when they emerge, especially from what we do, um, and they're sort of, continually tortured by it in some ways. I was kind of surprised how easy it was for me to let it go. Yeah. I loved my job, I loved the people I worked with to the very last day. I enjoyed coming to work and since I left I have enjoyed my new life just as much. And yeah. I look back with fondness on a lot of stuff that happened but um, I'm just so happy with the way things have evolved since I left the business that uh, I feel blessed. I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the world. Well, you may or may not be happy to know that many, many times do I say to myself, what would Dan Lewis do in this case? Like, I mean, you're the blueprint for what I do, and I'm not just saying that. It's about the nicest thing you can say to me, so thank you very much. It's, it's the truth. It's the truth. I feel like I learned from, I learned from the best. Well, and, uh, and, and also to understand, okay, what do I do when this wraps up? Because that's a kind of a big deal to think about, yeah. you know? And, and you, got, you execute your job as best you can. But when you're out of it, you need to kind of ex, you know, execute your life in a way that makes sense for you and that you, you're not sort of continually tormented over whatever, you know? I know you, we've known each other for a long time, so I know you pretty well. And I know I can feel that sense of, of calm and purpose, you know? I've had a lot of people say to me, you know, that, that they retired and they were bored, they didn't know what to do, they either went back to work or kind of got lost in their life, you know? And I, it's been three years, so it's really kind of a short period of time. But if I can keep it up the same way, I mean, I have told so many people, could I be happier? Maybe. But I'm about as content as I've ever been in my entire life. See what you got yourself into? There's still a bit more dessert. Next, some moments from dinner you almost didn't get to see. There was one time. When we decided to bring these guys together, we wanted to do it someplace special. Sky City Restaurant at the top of the Space Needle turned out to be the perfect spot. 500 feet off the ground, you can't beat the incredible views. And Chef Jeff Maxfield's Northwest inspired menu is really second to none. We really could not have picked a better place to catch up and watch the sun go down with old friends. We want to thank Eric, Steve, and Dan for being such great guests, and the Space Needle for the amazing food and the views. We leave you today with a few more moments from this unforgettable evening. So can we do this like once a week here? I mean, it's... Yeah. <laughs>
And the now, same crab cakes. It's now, a, it's now a tradition. I'm eating everything inside. Take a picture of your food, Steve. Yeah. Look, you're such a millennial. Whoa. I don't know where to start. Go to hell, Dan. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Could be my next trip. <laughs> All right, I won't unfriend yeah, you. Yeah.